Welcome back to Madison's Mayor's Minutes and we have Bob Courtney here with us again. How are you doing Bob? I'm doing great Debbie. Thanks for another invitation to uh, share information with the public. Uh, this is great. You, you always bring good information so it's wonderful. The more we can educate the citizens the better educated decisions they'll have. I totally agree and I want this to be about their community and their government. So anything we can do to help uh, improve education as well as in, improve involvement in the community, yes. I'm all for. Well, if they understand it, they're more likely to be involved, which brings us to the, one of the questions we have. A young lady named uh, Lindsay asked a question about the TIF board. This lady doesn't know what a TIF board is or how it works, so maybe you can explain how a TIF board works. Well, first I'll mention that uh, there's about 29 to 30 boards and committees uh, that City of Madison has, and it involves literally dozens of volunteers who, you know, gratefully provide uh, their time and effort to make sure that a lot of the day-to-day the -day business for the city is, is taking place. But there is one board in particular. It's, it's, uh, it's actually the Redevelopment Commission, but it's also known as the TIF Board because what the Redevelopment Commission does is they supervise an area called the TIF Zone, which is a tax increment finance district, and it's downtown and on the hilltop. And really, it's a financing vehicle that the city has and lots of communities like Madison have, where we can promote economic development through our, throughout our community through, uh, through collection of revenues that's generated through the TIF zone. That makes a lot more sense than just a TIF board. Right. So now they can actually understand what it does. In, in, in its most simple terms, it's about collecting s some form of tax revenue on just commercial and industrial property across the community that's in this TIF district. And then those funds are incorporated in a redevelopment plan uh, that the mayor's office and the redevelopment commission approve through resolution as well as working collaboratively with the planning commission and city council and community input so there's a lot of uh, input that goes into designing the redevelopment plan yes. for the city and what it really does is it establishes economic development priorities and they can be about um, retention expansion of businesses promoting small business promoting tourism uh, investing in quality of life initiatives across uh, our community right. as well as um, investing in infrastructure which is roads sewers utilities sidewalks all those types of things that promote our community it's time to shake things up at breakfast. Sure, you could have the same old, same old, or you could bite into the Chicken McGriddles or the McChicken Biscuit. Get both for just three bucks and add any size Coke for a dollar. Now we have one interesting thing that's happening that's really cool for the city of, in, of Madison, Indiana, and that is there's a large piece of property that is in the process of being purchased by the city. Can you fill us in on the progress of that piece of property? Sure. So we have two primary economic development priorities. One is on the hilltop, and that is the redevelopment of the uh, former shopping center that's at Clifty Drive and Michigan Road. Yes. And the other one is the downtown grocery store. So the one we're working on right now is we uh, approved through the Redevelopment Committee's uh, Commission's meeting last week. They've authorized me to enter into negotiations with, this, with the owner of that property to purchase it. It's approximately 22 acres. That property has had several attempts at redevelopment over the course of the last literally five to 25 years. Right. Um, as you know, the city helped support demolition efforts there about five years ago. Much the different. city had entered into an agreement with the developer to invest a certain um, number, basically $10 million worth of capital investment at that property. It, hadn't ha it has not happened yet, so we're going to take a different approach. We want to actually uh, be more influential and control the redevelopment of that property, which is why the Redevelopment Commission authorized me to enter into negotiations to buy the property so that we can then determine its future and uh, so we are in that process now there's lots of due diligence that still has to occur first we have to actually negotiate a purchase uh, agreement with the sellers we have already negotiated a very substantial discount to the purchase price uh, that they had been asking for and then what we'll do from there we'll do some due diligence uh, making sure that the property is suitable for the development activity that we want to see there we're working with our city planner as well as working with several developers who have already expressed an interest in partnering with us to uh, develop that property 
most likely into uh, retail as well as much needed affordable uh, multifamily rental housing for the Hilltop area. Oh, that sounds, all that sounds good. I mean, not just one of them, but all of it. It's going to be great. I mean, we right now have what is in essence a blighted property. It's undeveloped. Uh, it's unmaintained. It is a good location for development. I oh, think yes. it's a good location for us to uh, put our redevelopment dollars toward as long as we can get the capital attraction that we want. And so the approach of my administration basically is leveraging city's dollars to the maximum potential. Here what we anticipate is attracting between 38 and 40 million dollars worth of additional capital through private investment at that location. And I think that'll be very conducive. It'll increase the tax base mm -hmm. and the support that the city will be providing to that, uh, to that location will be very quickly repaid through uh, higher property taxes that come back through the TIF board. And it'll increase, it'll improve uh, and inc create construction related jobs, permanent jobs, quality of life, as well as housing. And I think it's going to be a win-win um, if, we, if we get to the finish line with it. And we've, we are optimistic we will. Oh, I think it would be awesome if you get all that done. So hopefully it will be done quickly. Well, the other thing that I want to emphasize, too, is that our approach to economic development, and particularly using uh, public dollars for incentives, is that that investment has to happen now. Right. We're not going to enter into agreements uh, like uh, had been done in the past where the city provides an incentive with the anticipation or speculation that its return on its investment will happen sometime into the future. We're going to have a, a plan. Uh, so what, I, what I've said all along is that leaders have a vision and a plan. We definitely have a vision where we want to take Madison and we have a plan to, uh, to implement. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you're a good planner. You, well, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're a list person. I am. So that's good though. I like that. So now one of the things that has been a big issue in the community right now is vaping and mm -hmm. it's caused a big impact on our school students at the high school. Right. So how, how can the community help prevent some of this stuff that's going on? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a very, very serious community health issue that we're facing right, right. now. Uh, I spoke with the director of our uh, Jefferson County Department of Health just a little while ago and we've had around 14 incidents in the past week and a half or so where individuals, mostly students, uh, have been experimenting with vaping that have uh, included some unknown substance. Um, the uh, Indiana Department of Health as well as the CDC and the Indiana State Police as well as our local school system and uh, law enforcement. I believe they have identified the substances uh, that are uh, impairing these individuals. Right. We need to make sure that everybody knows how dangerous vaping unfamiliar substances can be. Uh, vaping in general certainly can be a health hazard, right. particularly for uh, young individuals. They need to be cognizant as well as the, the parents need to be vigilant uh, relative to what their, what their students are doing. We've also had um, two adults in the school system succumb to the vaping uh, oh, fumes wow. today, wow. and they were hospitalized. So we're going to pull together all of our investigative and enforcement resources. Like I said, we're working statewide as well as with the CDC and all of the law enforcement agencies to get to the bottom of it. But education and prevention is the best thing that we can be doing. And uh, I can't emphasize enough uh, that our parents and, and teachers and everyone involved need to be really, really vigilant um, in supervising uh, our kids. They have lots of methods in which they can bring uh, these devices into school right. and vape during school or outside of school, uh, but we need to make sure that we're paying attention to it and we don't want it to grow into a, a bigger community health issue than it already is. And that's when you look at this and you have to think, you know, should I, should I tell somebody that I saw so-and-so purchasing it at the store or I saw so-and-so out back smoking. Yes, we need, yes, we, need you to, should. we need to say something. You know, we're talking about health risk factors here. Yeah. Uh, not only with adults, uh, but, but just as importantly, the children. It, the um, and thing. we need to make sure, again, that we're doing what we can with prevention and education. Right. And particularly if there are some illegal substances that are being uh, included or indoctrinated into these va vaping devices, right. uh, our law enforcement are going to get to the bottom of it. And, and I'm asking the community to cooperate here. Um, we know that um, there are sources out there that's been providing these vaping substances to yes. our children. 
and hopefully they'll come forward. Uh, anybody uh, I'm pleading with you, come forward if you have information so we can get to the bottom of it. We do not want any anyone in our community um, to be at risk for uh, these vaping substances. Right, I, I agree totally. I, I think it's great yeah. that if the community pulls together, it'll get solved a lot quicker. Sure, absolutely. So, and now you have an idea about doing a state of the city address which will be wonderful for the community have you progressed with that well we have and you know the whole theory behind a state of the city is the fact to lay out the vision that we have uh, in city hall with uh, myself my team all the department heads uh, community leaders everybody who's involved to lay out the vision of where we want to take our community we talked a lot um, during the campaign, and now the prim and certainly the three pillars of my of my uh, administration is community safety, economic opportunity, and quality of life initiatives. So we're working on a date, but I believe it's going to be around March the 19th, and uh, we're going to invite the entire community. There'll be some. Um, uh, we'll, we'll publish and, and promote when the date actually occurs, but it's going to be around March the 19th. And uh, we're going to lay out what our vision is for the city. And, and again, leaders have a vision and a plan. If we, can, if we can see it, we can believe it, we can achieve it, uh, we can put these things in action and we can actually build the consensus that we need to move our community in the right direction in all three of those pillars, safety, economic opportunity, and quality of life can't emphasize enough that those are the those will be the foundation of our of our administration and uh, I'm very much looking forward to uh, just uh, communicating with the public and re receiving feedback from them on where we're going I'm also a big believer Debbie that if you don't know where you're going any road will take you there and so what we want to do is be intentional about the things that we yes. do we want to make sure we want to make sure that we have a plan uh, that it's specific, that it is measurable, it's achievable, and w it's realistic and we can actually achieve it in a certain timetable. So that's, again, that's the premise of, uh, of our uh, administration, and that is what all, everyone in, in uh, all the department heads were working toward, which is to have intentional outcomes that are measurable. So I'm looking forward to that a lot. And this helps the community, too, because if they know where you're headed, then they're better equipped to help you head that direction. Well, and, so. and I also want to emphasize that this isn't just my vision. This right. is the community vision. This is the opportunity through a lot of stakeholder meetings to talk about it and share with the community that we've listened, we've heard what you what you want us to do, right. and now here's the action plan. And uh, I, you know, I'm humbled and honored to, to be the mayor of the city of Madison, the mayor of my hometown where I grew up and lived in my entire life. and. Uh, I'm just uh, grateful to have the opportunity to lead Madison into into the future. Uh, you you listen to everybody, no matter what their take on it is. You always listen and you take those ideas, and then you decide which ones work best and which ones are financially able to do. So any input people have by them having a plan, they can have better input with what you're doing. We've been really methodical about our approach to decision making, evaluating really a lot of different options mm -hmm. and making one that is the most impactful. Uh, there's always a value proposition in the things that we do. We know that we're working with limited resources, so we have right. to stretch those dollars as far as possible. And it's not just the city of Madison, it's, it's also uh, our partnerships, uh, our nonprofits, uh, our business community, um, the state, uh, our state stakeholders, our educational healthcare systems here. Um, everyone across the community has an investment yes. in the city of Madison. And, the, and we're all aligned with our interest in making sure that it is the best it can be, yep. it's the cleanest, it's the safest, and it's the most beautiful it can be. So we're going to do bigger and bolder things uh, to make sure that our community can be all can be. Well, we talked about people having input in all this, and there's going to be a, a meeting coming up that people can have input on what's called the buffer zone, which is right. some people don't understand what it is, some people don't know how it works, and then others have their ideas so right. how can they address Well this those? is an area where public input is really important so yeah. tomorrow night at City Hall uh, 6 p.m. we'll have the second meeting which is actually the public input portion of this whole process to 
um, identify issues that constituents who either live in the city of Madison or in the two mile jurisdictional area surrounding the city of Madison, also known as the buffer zone, uh, whatever issues, pro and con that they have with uh, being living in that jurisdictional area. Um, it is an area that the uh, Jefferson County Commissioners delegated to the, to the city of Madison and the town of Hanover to have jurisdiction over for uh, land use matters. And it's been out there since the early to mid 60s. Right. Now, you know, it doesn't come without its uh, element of controversy. But I believe in zoning and having um, prudent land use and, and land planning. And that's the whole purpose of the, this two-mile jurisdictional area. Right. We have a planning commission, a board of zoning appeals. We have the city council and the county council uh, and county commissioners. We're all working together to make sure, again, that Jefferson County and the city of Madison can be the best it can be. So we're going through this intentional process of community input so we can identify what issues might exist and address them appropriately. And uh, so again, it's a, it's, a, it's a part of our collaboration with Jefferson County and I invite everybody to, to come to City Hall tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, if they have, uh, if they want their voices to be heard uh, relative to that two mile jurisdictional area. Probably. And there'll probably be other public input sessions. Right. Uh, we're going to meet every two weeks. Uh, there's a, a bit of a task force that's right. uh, been organized between the county and city planning commissions and county and city leadership now, uh, is, to, pl to talk every two weeks right. and do work during those, that two week uh, period. Now, is there an email that they can send? questions or have input in because if they don't make it to that meeting tomorrow night they may have an idea that it might be a really good idea but how do they get that to you because there's they can send me an email yes. or any one of the commissioners an email too and okay. I'll make sure that it gets forwarded to this task force the yes. planning commission uh, members who are on it and my email address is mayor at madison-in.gov. Um, okay. And, or you can call 812-265-8300 and speak with uh, my assistant, uh, Tammy, there, oh, and yeah. we'll, get you to the right, we'll get you to the right uh, uh, place as well to make sure your input is heard. Oh, that's awesome. Now, you guys remember, we always emphasize this, is that you can call with any idea you want to. If you're going to complain, you need to have a solution. You need to have an idea of where it needs to go from there. So, I want to say also and thank the community that some of our best ideas yes. come from the community and the community dialogue. So what you said earlier with, with regards to if you have an idea and it, it is a concern, uh, it, it is fantastic to come with solutions because that's how we solve problems. Yeah. And we're in the problem solving business uh, every single day. Um, you know, I wake up thinking about what we can do better than we did yesterday. And uh, we all, all of our team gets together all the time and we're talking about just a, a plethora of, uh, you know, opportunities, I would say, that we need to uh, improve upon. Right. And it is about community engagement. This is, this is your government. Uh, I work for you. And I want to hear your thoughts and concerns, and I also want to hear your ideas and solutions uh, to make Madison a better place to live. Oh, well, I think you're going to get some emails, I think. Hope so. Now, I like to hear the ideas. That's the cool part of it. So, right. wonderful. All right. Well, we're going to have to let everybody go here in just a second. Do you have anything else that you want to tell everybody? Any other, anything, would leave anything out for today? No, I just want to thank you for oh, all of your welcome. efforts on uh, public communication. So. Yeah. It, it, again, it's just really important that we communicate really well and March the 19th is our proposed date for the uh, State, State of the City, City Address. It's been uh, quite a few years since uh, a mayor has yeah. uh, presented that to the community, but I believe that us working together and laying out the vision is going to make sure that we end up with a better outcome. Oh, I the, do. Uh, if everybody knows where you're year. headed, it, it, you go a lot faster. Exactly. So, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm so glad you're here today, Bob. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Now, you're going to be back, right? I'll be so. back as long as we continue to get views and people like what we're saying. And if there are topics you want to hear, uh, send those in to Debbie or myself, yeah. too, because we want to make sure this is informative as possible. Yeah, we had two people. Two of the questions today, one was from a lady named Lindsay, and the other one was from a guy named Bob. So two of the issues me. that was wasn't this Bob. <laughs> two of the things. Well, no, it was Rich, not Bob. Okay. It was Rich. So, so two of the things we addressed today were actually from the community. Were questions that they had about that what goes on in City Hall. So yeah, you just send us your questions. We'll make sure we have him address them. So be safe out there. 
And uh, if you see anything that we need to take action on, please let us know. Yeah, yep. great. Well, thanks again for being with us. Thank you, Debbie. And as always, we appreciate our sponsors. They make all of this possible. And thank you for watching.